So you may have tried the how-to guides on how to fix your blue screens of death. You've tried changing memory sticks and you've tried changing the power supply. Okay, some of these may indeed fix your problems. But if you're still having those blue screens of death, then today we're gonna to go through some of the weirdest problems I've encountered since I've started building PCs. And of course, how you can fix those problems. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday. The first problem we're gonna get into is undervolted default settings. This one can rear its head up more than you would think, especially in 2018, where AMD and Intel are, how could you say it, pushing the envelope as much as possible on their CPUs, particularly when consumer CPUs like the Ryzen 2000 series and also the i7 lineup are to be discussed. These have been clocked more aggressively out of the box towards the point where they may be near diminishing points of return. So in some cases, when a power supply is a budget one that may have large amounts of ripple, which is a whole topic in itself, but basically fluctuating voltage levels that can in certain cases drop below the default voltage spec, leaving your computer blue screening, coupling this together with a budget motherboard being used with most likely a lackluster VRM, that's a voltage regulator that draws power directly from your power supply and then changes it to power that your processor can use. All this can lead to a situation where your central processing unit may be starved of sufficient voltage to run at even default settings. So in order to fix this, just simply head into the BIOS. So hit the delete or F2 key when your computer boots. And if your computer allows to, which on most modern motherboards, the hardware will boot at non-turbo settings. So you shouldn't crash before you get into the BIOS. And then simply after this, go to the part where your CPU voltage settings are, and then just press the plus or minus key on your numpad and try raising these over the default settings. Voila you may be able to kiss those blue screens goodbye. However, before we get on with problem number two, if you have a lot of different websites that you visit, and perhaps you are like me and have a different tiering of passwords for websites, starting from websites you don't trust at all, to websites that have your personal banking details, then today's video sponsor LastPass can help you out greatly. I find myself constantly visiting websites that aren't that important to me personally, but I do enjoy reading, news and forums for example, and then a lot of them require username and passwords that you may all well forget. Well, if you don't want to forget any more, then LastPass can auto-generate unique passwords for every website you frequent and store them in a secure cloud and auto-fill it into those websites to make your life that much easier. I've been using the service for a while now and it's avoided a lot of headaches. And an added benefit of it is, is that you can have all those secure passwords for these sites shared to you and your trusted friends. For instance, an NVIDIA NDA login account for driver downloads. Then you can easily share a password with other LastPass users and you know exactly who you've shared it with. Not to mention they don't know what the password exactly was used either. So if you feel like you don't like sharing the account anymore, you can just simply cut them off. And this service is completely free to try out. Links in the description below. Number two, hibernation mode. Computers often go to sleep. And on Windows default settings, the computer can go into a mode called hibernation, where the computer is on a minimal power draw state and is ready to spring to life the moment you click a button on your keyboard or mouse. There are also other settings like USB ports and PCIe slots on your motherboard that can be disabled too. Though here's where things can get a little tricky. Some budget power supplies don't actually support the low power draw states to feed the CPU when it is in this mode. So the computer doesn't wake up after you hit a button. This can in particular rear its ugly head after the fourth gen Intel CPUs were introduced. That is CPUs like the i7-4770, i5-4670K, i5-6400, etc. Where Intel introduced a low power mode called C7. So in order to circumnavigate this problem and stop it from becoming a problem, you can do one of two things. Either go into the BIOS and set your minimum C state to C3, or if you're on a laptop, I do recommend C6 for power savings, which is what I always do. Or you can go into Windows, or of course you can do both, which is what I do on my desktop computer, X79, God bless. And in the power settings, you can set your computer to high power mode. In here, you can also change selective suspend settings and PCIe power states. And in general, this just helps make a super snappy machine. Though one negative to all this is of course higher power consumption. So again, if you're on a laptop, do be careful. You may wish to just go with C6 in the BIOS and call it a day. And of course, if you're no longer having those B-sods or freezers, then you can call it a day. Number three, faulty memory modules. This one is such a pain to diagnose because sometimes it's completely random in nature and it can pass some of the diagnostics tests and then bam, just suddenly spring on you with a blue screen or a program crashing for no reason. 
or in rare circumstances, lines going through your screen. Though if you do want to rule out memory problems, the best way is to run MemTest 86 Plus and run this for a few hours. Going through all the tests, it will stress the memory thoroughly and if the memory does have a fault, I usually find it will come out in this stress test. It has never given me a false positive nor a false negative. So in order to get this program to work, just simply download it, make a bootable USB and then boot into MemTest 86 and you shall be good to go. Though if you don't have much time and you don't want to make that bootable and you don't want to use MemTest 86, then you can try just using one memory stick at a time. Or if you've only got one memory stick in your computer, you can try changing that out for another memory stick because in my time building PCs, I've never had two memory sticks go bad at the exact same time. And I've built a lot of computers, so this is rare. If this ever did happen, you're like one of those guys who won the lottery, but in a negative way. Anyway, if you do find out there was a memory problem with your computer, then you should no longer be freezing or having blue screens of death. Coming in with number four is hardware incompatibility. This can sometimes come about with things like RAM not working with a particular motherboard, or simply, and in this one is very weird, using a cheaper chipset license, like a H61 versus a Z68 motherboard, for example, or a H110 motherboard versus a Z170. I found that some budget motherboards will just simply not have the ability to boot two different DDR3 memory modules from different manufacturers at the same time. If this is indeed the problem, then I would suggest just trying one memory stick at a time, and of course, simply just trial and erroring the situation. And if they don't work together, then you may wish to source another memory stick or another motherboard, because unfortunately some problems like these are just non-avoidable and non-curable. Another common problem is using a PCI or PCIe wireless adapter, and the drivers not simply being installed, and when you install them, they just give you a B-SOD. Like in the past, I've used a D-Link wireless module, and uh, when I turn the computer on, it was working before I installed the module, but then after, as soon as I get into Windows, bang, B-SOD. This can cause a lot of frustrations, and in this case, if you buy a new piece of hardware and this happens, then simply return it to the store and get a refund, and try a different brand of product. We are the consumers ultimately, and we should not be used as beta testers. It can cause some serious headaches. Though more problems from hardware incompatibility can arise from things like sound cards. Same thing as the wireless modules. Some can cause issues even working on Windows 7, for example, but then when you upgrade to Windows 10, bang, no longer works. Same deal, save yourself the headaches and get rid of this problematic part out of your life. And coming in with number five is a faulty or underwhelming power supply. This one is a very, very tricky one to diagnose sometimes. And in fact, I've only had this rarely pop up a few times since I've started building computers. Mind you, I don't use garbage power supplies and I have been building and tinkering for a very long time, though that doesn't mean that it won't happen and it can happen. So basically the problem here is that if you have a faulty power supply, your computer will either just not boot or it can blue screen or it can just freeze. And other problems that can happen as well is that your computer may seem fine, but there is this weird burning smell and it's not the smell of freshly opened hardware. This is different. It's a smell that just lingers and draws itself to your nose. If you smell this odor, ladies and gentlemen, then do yourself a favor, shut down your PC immediately, find out the source of the smell and remove that part ASAP. This goes not just for the power supply, but other components in your system. Though 99% of the times a weird smell from your PC has always been from a power supply. That's just my experience. So always out of all your PC components, do get a power supply that is a little better than the cheapest junk they sell from the brand you've never heard of. For instance, if you are in Australia, the promised land, and you are on a budget, even a power supply like a Corsair VS350 will be miles better than some no-name 680 watt power supply that will in due time most likely sizzle. And the problem here is that it might not just take itself, but it could also take out other hardware with it, or even your whole house. Don't risk it, just like those dodgy sellers on Gumtree or Facebook. And the last problem with power supplies is of course the power supplied. Some people buy cheap 500 watt power supplies thinking they can power their GTX 1070 all okay. And then when they boot up a game and find out their computer just shuts off, this is because that 500 watt power supply, just like mentioned above, is junk. You will generally need to spend some decent money on a power supply if you're putting in medium to high end components in a build. If you need to find some decent power supplies, then I will put some links in the description below. But for most people, a solid 650 watt power supply will cover you for years and years to come and it won't break the bank and it will be able to be ported from every PC you build, meaning you can reuse it. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below what are the weirdest problems you've come into when it comes to blue screens 
or freezing or problems that you may encounter when building PCs. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, LastPass, completely free to try out. Links in the description below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.